Hello, you're watching news from Kazakhstan on K+. It is Thursday, March 7th. Another book on the topic of President Nazarbayev's achievements, along with that of the government the, he has led for the last 20 years unchallenged, was presented on Wednesday in Astana. A collection of essays titled Kazakhstan in the International Community was written by the former Minister of Foreign Affairs and current advisor to the national leader, Yerzhan Kazakhanov. Officials from the Foreign Ministry and members of the President's administration attend the book presentation at the National Library. Although the author himself was missing and the organizers didn't bother to explain why, the 1,000 published copies of the monograph contain 30 photographs of President Nazarbayev and talks about the country's international achievements. When confronted with the question of whether Kazakhstan managed to improve the situation with freedom of speech, respect for human rights and reduction of corruption since attaining independence, the organizers replied with a sounding yes without a single moment of hesitation. These issues generate many discussion points. Nevertheless, in my humble opinion, Kazakhstan did manage to find success in the area of freedom of speech, human rights and reduction of corruption. We do have some room for improvement though, but the adopted laws allow the country to join the ranks of developed states. Towards the end of the workday, President Nazarbayev sent a telegram expressing his condolences to Venezuela on the passing of President Hugo Chavez. The commandant died on March 5th at around 5 p.m. local time after a long ailment. Leaders of Latin American states, the, U the U.S., Russia, Iran and Belarus sent their condolences to the people of Venezuela on Wednesday. Ahmadinejad and even Lukashenko announced three days of mourning in their countries due to Chavez's passing. The president of Venezuela was quite an extraordinary, controversial and charismatic politician. He was a friend of Gaddafi, Lukashenko and Putin and called George W. Bush the devil. Hugo Chavez started out as a radical reformer but ended up an authoritarian ruler. During 13 years in office, he tried to modernize the economy and successfully reduce the number of both rich and poor people in the country. Eventually, the middle class firmly supported the opposition while investors fled the country. Chavez initiated the referendum allowing him to be elected as a president more than once and subsequently held the election while keeping his cancer in secret. El Comandante only revealed his illness to public after winning the recent elections. Chavez was known for his attempts to build a new type of socialism with free medical care and decent infrastructure. However, he was also blamed for economic decline because of strict government control regulations and control over private business. The number of people living below the poverty line has fallen by almost a half percentage-wise. But of course, he was an authoritarian ruler and undoubtedly made most of the decisions single-handedly. The production of oil in Venezuela declined over the last 10 years because little investment was made into the new resources development, while funds were simply dissipated. Chavez had charisma and was able to talk to people in their language. Just like a magician, he could captivate people's attention with his vision for the future. Lower House parliamentarians adopted a bill in first reading according to which police officers will be tested on a lie detector in their employment process. However, Assistant Attorney General Johann Merkel proposed to expand the polygraph's abilities and test it out on public servants. Our reporters note that there are those who believe in the apparatus and those who choose not to. This way, the reporter took on an uneasy role of Kazakhstan official and even tried to lie to a lie detector. Modern polygraphs have an accuracy of 98-99%. It is absolutely impossible to cheat a polygraph itself because it is simply a piece of metal. One can cheat that man operating the polygraph and only if he is lacking experience or qualification or is not following our instructions. Jogan Merkel, deputy to the general prosecutor in Kazakhstan, said at the parliament yesterday that nowadays it is not the sense of conscience, but a piece of equipment that is the best lie detector. According to research, often a polygraph is the only way to verify if the information provided by people is valid and obtain the information that is being concealed. Bolata Bilov, a dissenter politician, believes that an official in Kazakhstan can outsmart any polygraph. People who are interested may change the data and test results. There won't be any tangible results. They may, of course, fire one or two officials simply to demonstrate that they failed the polygraph. But this practice will be of little or no effect. Journalist Dmitry Batziv has once had an opportunity to see the polygraph in action. He once used it on a policeman. He shared his thoughts regarding the new government initiative. 
If you look at the ways we fight corruption, you'll see that the money allocated for state programs are being embezzled. I think that the same thing will happen with the money allocated for polygraphs. Unfortunately, the law that hasn't even been enacted yet is not meeting everyone's interests. According to its top irreplaceable government officials cannot be subjected to a polygraph examination. Former lower house parliamentarian Bakhutsa Zdikova believes that promoting women into power will help get rid of corruption. She believes the fairer sex do not even have it in them to make bribes or to take bribes. Obviously not everyone shares that opinion, citing some examples as a counter argument. Is it worth going by gender in a battle with corruption? Opinions were heard in this report. XMP Bahit Sizdikova believes only women can rid the country of corruption. She wants to see the increased presence of the fair sex in power. On the eve of the International Women's Day, the famous Kazakhstan politician says the country lacks a single woman governing a region. This seems unfair, since many ladies are obviously stronger than incumbent officials. If women rise to power, Kazakhstan will see the reduction of corruption. Compared to guys, girls have more morals and are less prone to commit corruption crimes. In the very least, they'd be afraid to accept a bribe. Once a presidential candidate, Musagari Duambayev wonders whether Sizdikova is just testing waters making similar statements. After all, there is no factual proof of studies showing gender bias when it comes to corruption. Moreover, the recent case of the former statistics agency head Anara Mishambayeva is still fresh in memory. She was accused of embezzling millions of dollars of state money. Is this some sort of a hint for the public to start a discussion whether a woman should rise to power under the guise of anti-corruption talks? These issues are not related. In my opinion, everything here points to a clear agenda. It just all happens very suddenly, even with Derika Nazarbayeva being an outspoken MP. But no, the idea is presented as if it was never talked about before. The problem was raised and now everyone appear to support it. Scientist Makash Tatimov is carefully monitoring all the demographic processes in Kazakhstan. He believes that local women should pay more attention to families, since the population of career-focused single females in the country has already reached 385,000. There are about 20 women in the parliament. If we rise the number tenfold, we'd get 200 women, a half of the convocation. Do you think this will solve all our issues? Women are best when it comes to discussing family problems, and state decision-making is not for them. Nuray Aitbaeva is studying in Delmati's Women's Pedagogical College and says that phenomenon of corruption is in no way related to offenders' sex. Many students skip classes and don't study well. Later they pay professors to remain in college. I think there are no people who never tried bribery. The only real question here is the price. Perhaps this is the first time the issue of corruption is reviewed from the gender perspective in Kazakhstan. As for the political equality rates, two years ago the country was placed 69th out of 188 for the number of female MPs. There are currently 19 women in the 107-member lower house and only one in the Senate. At the same time, there are no female governors in Kazakhstan and not a single woman has ever run for the president. Slave labor is still the norm, but attitude towards it has to change, suggests the International Organization on Migration. The battle with this phenomenon is not so much of a priority as is low demand for migrant workers by the employer. According to the latest data, there are more than 20 million people exploited and made to work across the world. How urgent is the issue of slavery in Kazakhstan is explored in this story. The International Organization for Migration breaks the stereotypes. It decided to view the issue of slavery from a different perspective and intend to fight it by reducing the demand on employer's side. During the roundtable, an Almaty Central Asian experts appealed to the business associations and trade unions to start a dialogue. They proposed to introduce a code of ethics. Perhaps it may reduce the demand and then eventually decrease human trafficking. The experts also analyzed such phenomena as sexual and child slavery from a new angle. I've mentioned a lot of our, um, a lot of the global community has been focusing much more on the reactiveness. But, uh, but I think if you take a look at overall trends, I think that's something for us to realize is, is that before we, we always talked about sexual exploitation, but if you take a look at the trends, Officially, the police identified 67 cases of prostitution and 17 instances of compulsory labor in Kazakhstan only in 2012. Moreover, 13 criminal cases were initiated on charges of child sex trafficking and about 200 cases of running brothels and procuration. Upon interviewing the victims, psychologists concluded that everyone deals with this common problem in different ways. 
There are cases when a person who spent only two days in sexual slavery experiences more trauma than a person who spent four years. The last one got already used to it and developed a self-defense mechanism. Once this individual comes out of this situation, it is a lot easier to work with this person. According to Tastimir Abishev, the representative of the Commission on Human Rights under the President of Kazakhstan, there are special committees established in the country which monitor the human trafficking. The human rights activists believe that situation isn't so critical to ring the alarm. The problem of human trafficking in Kazakhstan is not major. We've only had a few cases. According to the data we have, in 2011 and 2012, there were only 40 criminal cases initiated, including trafficking, baby trafficking and compulsory labor of migrants. Foreign observers have noted that the countries of Central Asia are still at risk. It's extremely difficult to reveal all of the instances of human trafficking. Besides, Kazakhstan is a country which is often visited by people looking for work. However, instead of construction field, for instance, the migrants are drawn into some shady business or simply become enslaved. People with disabilities still find it difficult to get jobs. That is why they asked to reconsider certain legislative elements on accruing benefits. These proposals were offered on Wednesday in Astana at a roundtable on the subject of forming conditions for women with limited eyesight. The representatives of the non-governmental sector, ethno-cultural organizations and officials held a roundtable discussion on finding ways to solve disabled women's issues including additional education, employment and business participation. It was proposed to revise the disability benefits law as the government reduced social support for the disabled to a minimum. In Soviet times, sight-disabled people were given state benefits including 50% payment for utility services, 50% payment for medicine and free phone service. Unfortunately, once Karjova became the minister of all, these benefits were removed. Instead, we were given 1.4 monthly calculation index. Even though the index has gone up by 60 cents, it is not enough to buy a bottle of milk. Three police officers were detained in Shemkent. They are accused of illegally bribing local residents. The police patrol crew was taking money from intoxicated people on the streets. Since the beginning of this year, the DIA has been repeatedly receiving complaints that police patrol forces systematically extort money from drunk people. This information went through careful verification and soon police patrol officers, including 42-year-old Sergeant Major along with two other sergeants, were arrested on one of the streets of Shimkent. 11,000 tenge, roughly $70, which belonged to one individual, were seized from the suspects as the evidence. The investigation on charges of abuse of office was initiated. The detainees are currently kept in detention center. This instance was discussed at the briefing chaired by the chief of the department. All heads of police regiment were invited. All possible reasons of what could have caused it and under what conditions, all of it was taken into account. In this respect, a few chiefs of police regiment received disciplinary punishment. Several district supervisors of the arrested police officers were dismissed. Zilorda residents suffer from dog bites more often than other Kazakhstanis. According to statistics, two townspeople bitten by stray dogs died of rabies in 2011. Last year, doctors were unable to save the life of a teenager. And beginning this year, 39 people alone became victims of stray dogs. Nine of them in one of the regional centers' microdistricts were bitten by the same animal. The regional administration has been actively pursuing the extermination of stray dogs. This situation outraged city residents and also caused some panic. According to experts, up to 40 animals are killed every day. The actual number of stray dogs is not declining. The bodies are disposed at the burial ground outside the city, where other dogs and birds can dig out their carcasses. The crematorium was expected to solve the issue, but it soon became clear that the facility was commissioned for operation without appropriate permits. According to experts, the paperwork hustle can be solved in just a few days, although this solution is not likely to cure the entire stray dog's problem. The company is allowed to operate only if they have an environmental permit. However, during the inspection we learned they failed to secure documents with approved expert evaluation. Due to that, we requested the court to suspend the operation of the facility until the company removes all violations. An exhibition titled The Music of the Centuries opened at the Central National Museum in Almaty on Wednesday. 
to commemorate the 100th birthday of renowned composer and winner of the USSR State Prize, Mokan Tolibayev. Books, photographic materials, personal belongings, prizes, and even the musicians' gifts were presented at the exhibit. The exhibition also features the original manuscripts of poems written by Tulibayev's mother and dedicated to her late son. The composer's music was played throughout the entire celebration. Mukhan Tulibayev's spouse also shared her memories of the family life. He was quite lazy, slow and steady. When he wrote music, it took him a lot of time to produce it. That's all we have for now. Don't forget to follow us on the web. See you tomorrow.